Hi everyone, Mr. Silva here, and this is my take on Unit 8, Lesson 9. So in the last lesson, we talked about web application frameworks, and those are a set of software or code that are used to create more dynamic web pages. Uh, Django and Ruby on Rails are two types of these web application frameworks. Today we're talking about databases, and again, as I said in most of these lessons, these are all advanced topics that if you were really interested in them, you would learn more about them in advanced web design classes. So for our cases, you just need to know about them. You're not going to be expected to do them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is connecting to a database. And we talked about it very briefly a few units ago when we talked about CGI. The things that you need to know about databases in order for them to work, they need to have a server and the database needs to recognize each other. There needs to be some form of communication back and forth between them. There also needs to be permissions to the database so that it can be read or that it can be written to. Those are the two things you need to know in order for a database to work. So web servers and permissions with databases. Scripts that run on servers typically fail because they don't have the proper permissions to do so. Um, and it may be that they do not have the permission to run the files and the scripts, or that the file or script has the incorrect permissions, which will cause it to fail. So to solve, make sure that your server has all the permissions it needs, and you modify the permissions assigned so that it only has the permissions needed to function, because that could be a security issue if it has too much available to it. Essentially what this is talking about is that when your server tries to access files on a database, it will not if it can, does not have the proper password or permission the access to get to it so when you are creating a database you want to make sure that the files and the server all have the appropriate permissions meaning that hey the server wants this file is it able to access that because it needs the proper permissions to do so okay so the internet service provider and web servers. Your internet serv service provider, your ISP, can provide a web server to you if you so choose to for your database. Um, the way that you do this is that you have to request the following. You need to have the, um, the ability to enable execute permissions on scripts so the ISP can assign these permissions. They'll help you with that. You can create a directory that contains scripts and the ISP will usually create the directory for you. And it will provide usernames and passwords with appropriate permissions. In a Unix system, the password is usually root and in a Windows system, the password or the username rather, these are the usernames, not passwords. Uh, the username is typically administrator. And of course, you can also request that there be multiple accounts with the appropriate permissions for each account. Lastly, what we'll talk about is the tier applications um, and tiers. Um, with databases, you can have multiple, level, multiple ways of storing the parts of the information. So there are three things that are required for a database to essentially function and work. You need to have the data, the business logic, and the presentation. And there's three different things. The data is all of the files or file that you need that are part of the database. When you make a database, the database is a storage of files. So you need to make sure that you have the appropriate files for that database. Next, you need to have what's called the business logic. And this is a SQL, if you're curious about that, I suggest you look it up. We don't talk about it in this course. It's a coding necessarily necessary to create relationships with the data and stored in the database. It essentially, um, is able to find the data and you know when a person searches for a specific thing that they're looking for in the database the law the business logic allows you to find it based upon what you have essentially described it as and then presentation this is the way the data and the business logic are presented on the user screen so this is how it looks so you have the files you have the way that you find the files or the you know, stuff that's contained in the database. And then you have the way that it looks on your screen. Those are the three required elements in order for a database to be functioning and work. And then there are three different tiers of data of databases. We call these the end tiers. Um, 
Well, the end tier is one of them, but we have a single tier, and this is the data, the business logic, and the presentation are all on one application. So think back to the previous slide when I talked about the three things necessary for a database. Um, all three of those things are together. One of the most common examples is Microsoft Access, which is a database application that most computers that have uh, Office will have. Um, you can learn more about that. There's several courses about Access, but essentially all of that is included in one application. In a two-tier database, the client is responsible for the business logic and the database presentation. Um, so the client is responsible for setting all of that up, how it looks and how it communicates, but the database is stored on a separate server. So one server would hold the business logic and the presentation or one computer, and then this another server somewhere else would held all of the database files. This can be quite useful, especially if you have a very large database. Um, and then the last one is the end here, which all database elements are separated. Your data is on a separate server, your business logic is on a separate server, and your presentation are on a separate server. Each of these has their own advantages and disadvantages. So this wraps up this lesson. In conclusion, databases are used to store information that a user can access. It could be files or you know, things that someone needs to access. And there are multiple tiers of database application. All right, this concludes this lesson and this concludes unit eight.